Why should CSPs evolve to a cloud-native 5G core? What are the main challenges in doing so? And what are the key components to consider? Well, joining me now is Folky Anger, who is Head of Packet Core Solutions at Ericsson. Folky, very good to see you again. Yep, great to see you. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Um, so why should CSPs evolve to a cloud-native 5G core and why should they do this now? With uh, cloud-native and the 5G core, uh, it opens up new possibilities. If we start with uh, the 5G core part, we see that uh, even for the most common use case today, a mobile broadband network, that with uh, when you connect uh, your NR-capable uh, device over the radio up to the core, you get faster setup times and also, also faster time in order to access very high data rates by using carrier aggregation. That's a benefit by using the 5G core architecture compared with, the, let's say, a legacy uh, evolved packet core. Another aspect is the possibilities to look at new revenue streams for CSPs. Uh, here we have capabilities in the 5G core uh, where uh, operators can target, for instance, industrial use cases where you require very high reliability, extremely low latencies. Uh, for instance, if you're moving to a smart factory where it's like critical IoT uh, is, is required. Uh, so this is another angle of where 5D core really adds some value. Then if I comment a little bit on the cloud native part there, uh, most operators today, they have physical deployed uh, core networks. Very robust, working well, but it doesn't bring the agility uh, and the possibilities to quickly add new capabilities into the core network. By moving to a cloud native network, it's uh, uh, much easier to do software upgrades, to add new capabilities, to scale up and down uh, the core network, network functions compared with, let's say, a physical or even a virtual uh, deployed core network. So we see a number of benefits moving to a cloud native 5G core uh, network. So in the evolution to 5G core, what are the main challenges that CSPs need to address? If you look at the starting point for many CSPs today, uh, the majority of the traffic going through the packet core is, is handled through a physical uh, deployed uh, packet core uh, network. So here, moving uh, to, to maybe as a first point, moving to virtual or, or as a final step, then moving to a cloud native, uh, it's required to have the, the skill set uh, to operate and maintain a cloud native uh, core network with, for instance, hundreds of microservices that are uh, packaged together in order to serve certain network functions that adds new, um, new operational skills uh, within the operator. Uh, for instance, to have uh, this kind of layered architecture, having the, the infrastructure as a service layer, uh, the, the container as a service layer, and on top of that, uh, then the applications uh, for, the, for the packet core. So I would say it is an operational journey. And that you can take in different paths. You can start, for instance, doing a small, uh, small evolution in, in order to test out uh, the cloud native capabilities. We have seen operators today where they have MMEs uh, running either physical and virtual. And then in this pool of MME, they have the cloud native uh, MME. Uh, and then you have to sort of say the interworking in the pool between the different uh, uh, deployment options for the MME applications. So in practical terms, what does the evolution journey look like? We can look at two examples of evolution journey. Uh, one is uh, when uh, service providers add an overlay for the 5D core uh, capabilities. So you deploy the 5D core uh, as a cloud native uh, core network, and then you have interworking with the, the legacy uh, core networks. Uh, may it be EPC or 5D EPC capable network. That's one, one evolution journey we see. A second one is for, for operators where there's a con continued strong growth of LTE users uh, coming in. Uh, then, uh, in order to handle this traffic growth and additional subscribers in the network, uh, you can deploy an Ericsson dual mode uh, core, starting with having EPC and 5D EPC capabilities in the core network. And then at a later stage, when, when you would like to have the 5D core standalone capabilities, you activate these uh, capabilities. 
So you can see it's like two different uh, ways of, of introducing uh, 5G core standalone. And what are the key components to consider when building a cloud native core network for 5G? There are a number of parts that need to be in place. And one is to have the so to say the container as a service uh, on the infrastructure side, so adding a cost layer. Uh, here we see also two options. One is to add the cost layer on top of the, the infrastructure as a service layer, the IS layer, or going a bare metal deploying uh, where the cost layer uh, is, is running without an underlying infrastructure as a service layer. Uh, these are two parts. Uh, then we have uh, the, the management of this one, uh, add orchestration capabilities, uh, then adding the capabilities to orchestrate also cloud native network, cloud native network functions in addition to uh, virtualized uh, network functions on the management side. And then obviously the, the different uh, packet core uh, network functions then. So you can see it's a combination of the infrastructure, getting that ready for, for cloud native, uh, adding uh, the operational uh, orchestration uh, parts and then uh, of course having the, the network functions then as well from the packet core. So these are a couple of components uh, that is required. Folky, thank you very much indeed for joining us again on Telecom TV. Thank you.